on today's video, the best deck you've never heard of. Welcome back, ghouls and goblins. It is a pleasure to have you. My name is Hello Good Game. I hope you're all having an absolute magical day. Within this Magic the Gathering Arena deck guide video, we will be breaking down a Simic Tempo deck list in depth, discussing both the strategies as well as synergies in order to give you, the viewer, a deeper understanding of how to pilot this deck effectively and efficiently. Furthermore, we will be demonstrating the deck in our ranked gameplay footage within Mythic Rank against the best decks as well as players in-game. Finally, wrapping up with our concluding thoughts, deck review, and channel news. Thank you all again. I truly appreciate it. If you want to help out, leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel, and join that community Discord. Stop by, say hello. You'll be my pleasure. Let's take a look at the deck. It's a new lap record. Simic Cloak, name of the game here. 60 card standard, best of one, with a 2.3 average mana value. We have 24 lens uh, with 22 creatures to our 14 non-creatures. And uh, I'll tell you what, this deck has literally become my favorite uh, within the meta right now. We are winning and we're having a ton of fun doing it. Um, so first things first, the Sleep Cursed Fairy, a one mana 3-3 three, three with flying and ward two. That's pretty good. You can also untap it for two mana, which is ridiculous. And then, you know, the supposed downside here is that it enters the battlefield with three stun counters on it, right? Uh, when you untap it, you remove a stun counter from it. Uh, we can bypass that with the cloak, right? If we cloak this, we can uncloak it uh, or undisguise it, whatever, uh, for one mana, right? That is wild. Um, so put it face down, flip it over for its original casting cost of one. And now because it's already entered and it's just transforming, you don't have to worry about these three stun counters. And, uh, you know, you're getting a phenomenal creature with no downside, which is the bee's knees. Uh, adding on top of that, we have a, a couple new cards here that really work well with it. First off, the hard hitting question for one, sorcery speed, target creature you control deals damage uh, equal to its power to target creature or planeswalker you don't control. Um, so this is really good removal considering that this enters in on turn one as a 3-3, three, three, um, which makes this absolutely phenomenal, right? Uh, and then on that note as well, the repulsive mutation for two plus X at instant speed, putting X plus one plus one counters on target creature that you control and then counter up to one target spell unless its controller pays mana equal to the greatest power among creatures that you control. Um, that will have to be three because of the fairy Thank you, Decompose. I truly appreciate that. Uh, which is redonkulous, right? So for two mana, they're uh, counter uh, countering the spell unless they pay three. Um, very, very good. It's as good as No More Lies, right? No Exile, I guess. But with that higher ceiling, with those plus one, plus one counters that can be put onto our creature's late game. So this is really nice to counter spells. You can also take a lethal with it if your opponent's tapped out, just grabbing those plus one, plus one counters, right? That's always uh, an option for us here. Other new cards in the deck uh, will include the Cryptic Coat. Now we talked about, um, you know, disguising this creature, uh, cloaking it, right? Uh, we will do that with the Cryptic Coat. For three mana, when it enters the battlefield, cloak the top card of your library and then attach the coat to it. Equipped creature gets plus one, plus zero and cannot be blocked. We can pay two to return it to our hand, allowing us to repeat that process. Okay, uh, we will also be utilizing the Evolved Enigma for four, a three, four, and at the beginning of combat on your turn, either cloak a card from our hand or put a plus one, plus one counter on each colorless creature that we control. So again, this is a really easy way for us to cloak uh, the fairy. And then finally, hide in plain sight, Sorcery speed for four, looking at the top five cards of our library, cloaking two of them, and then putting the rest in the bottom of your library in random order. Again, you know, our primary goal here is to get the fairy, right? Um, of course, there are other creatures that you can take, like the dancer, like the enigma herself. Uh, you typically don't take the adaptive because you need that ETB to uh, have it survive. Um, and you typically don't take non-creature spells because you can't uncloak them. However, uh, you know, you can take lands if you don't need them um, because if they're removed from your deck, it's actually good in comparison to, you know, a, a non-land instant sorcery enchantment artifact, whatever it happens to be, right? Um, non-land, non-creature. So that's what's going on there with the cloak. Um, 
The adaptive is great here too, uh, in conjunction with the fairy, because it's a 3-3, right? So it's going to push up the adaptive multiple times, which is really cool. Um, and then we're coming back, you know, to plain sight. We're using the Mercurial Spell Dancer uh, as a 2-1 that can't be blocked. When you cast it on creature, give an oil counter to it. When you deal combat damage, you can remove two oil counters to copy your next instant or sorcery. So we will be hopefully copying Hide in Plain Sight, which is just crazy, crazy good, right? Um, so always nice to see that there. It is unblockable, just like the Cryptic Coat, which is great uh, in conjunction now with something like Defends the Temple, a three mana enchantment saga. When it enters, create a 1-1 one, one mana dork that taps for a green source. On your next draw step, put a plus one plus one counter on up to two creatures that you control, and then finally exile and transform into the Rising Star, a enchantment creature, 2-2 two, two with flying, and whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, you may pay X, uh, and when you do, put X plus one plus one counters on that creature, and as long as you control five or more modified creatures, the Rising Star gets plus five, plus five, and has trample as well. Um, so modified creature, modified creature, right? Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Uh, this is a modified creature. This will be modified creature as, as well. So, um, and then this can put plus one counters on our creatures. We will also put plus one counters on the creatures with the, the temple. So um, that's in abundance. We can proliferate all of those counters with the augury. Two mana instant speed, looking at the top three cards of your library, one into hand, rest in bottom um, in any order and then proliferate. We also have the Ozolith here. Uh, if one or more plus one plus one counters would be put on an artifact or creature, instead put that many plus one, which is great. With the Enigma, very, very good, because now they're getting two plus one counters on everything, which is pretty cool. You can cycle it for two if you already have a copy of it as well, which is not bad. Uh, again, another non-creature um, cards that will trigger uh, the Spell Dancer's oil counters, allowing us to then copy either a plane with sight, uh, or potentially, you know, a hard-hitting question as well, or uh, finally a draw. Uh, all very good options for us in specific scenarios. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, putting these plus one plus one counters late game on your unblockable creatures is ridiculous. It's just like, you're dead, right? Um, and then early game, we just have so much aggression with the two one drops, the fairy and the adaptive, holding up the mutation behind it. It is a very good start. Very good uh, mid and very good late game deck. Uh, truly having an absolute blast with this. Um, nine islands, nine forests are utility lands and a few duels. You know, just kind of tippy toeing into the deck to make sure that, you know, we're not going too far with it and uh, making sure that everything works correctly. And uh, so far, it's two thumbs up from this guy. Absolutely loving Simic Cloak. And I hope you do as well throughout today's gameplay footage, which we will begin now. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, become a YouTube member. Join that community Discord if you ever want to stop by, say hello, share your deck, whatever it happens to be. Can't wait to meet you. Cheers. Let's play some magic. All right. On the draw, pretty good hand, I think. A third land, obviously, would be helpful, but we'll get there. We'll get there. Scooch over a little bit. Maybe downsize myself a bit. There we go. Let's get that adaptive in on one. Fairy in on two. And try to find that third land. We could potentially fight. Hey, thanks for the follow. I appreciate that. Um, fight on turn two as well, maybe. It's a Boros aggro deck, so... Well, we're going to have a couple reasons to, I believe. And I honestly think we just kill everything, right? Oh, this isn't a hard hitting question. This is hide in plain sight. I... <laughs> I'm losing it. <laughs> I'm going to hit here. Um, we did get our third and then this creates the mana dork for our fourth. We just want to counter something like the Knight, like the Recruiter. Helix taking the Adaptive on the turn. Okay, interesting. It's not a bad play. Hmm. Do we go in lockout mode already? Hmm. 
Do we go in lockout mode already with our counter spell? I think we save it for one more turn. Hey, thanks for the raid. I hope you guys are having a great day. Welcome. We're just playing some Simic Cloak. Blue and green. Hey, thanks for the support as well. That's amazing. Beautiful. Oh, that's the recruiter we were worried about. We were maybe going to block that with a counter spell. But that opportunity's gone. We took the creature to capitalize on these counters here. Um, and, you know, it's to the point where the decision is up to us. And I think, you know, I'm going to continue to compound this. Right? Uh, it will be cloaking the fairy. And this way, when we flip it, we're able to dodge these sleep counters. Uh, which is pretty cool. It's an ETB uh, effect, so... You know, it's already entered the battlefield, um, so it won't trigger, which is pretty cool. They do have four mana, though, and I'm a little bit nervous. Um, if we can find our fifth, that would be super helpful. We could go in with another temple. Um, but if not, you know, we can just plain sight, I guess. Oh, that's damage. Okay. Yep, no, that's, uh, that's going to happen. I will block here, though. They're going to uh, convoke for the night. Nope. I'm holding up counter magic at this point. Um, I think that's almost a requirement. And I will also, I think, flip this up take our hit. We could have attacked and then flipped it and got better blockers, but I think this is just a clear source of damage. We'll take it. Um, and now we have the option to, A, untap our blockers, but B, just counter their spell. And I think we probably want to do that. Um, counter it unless they pay four. Should be fine. They only have four mana and four creatures, so they can't quite convoke the knight for five totally for free and then have enough counter magic, so... And it would actually be five. Um, the three mana recruiter, right? So we'll just pay one here, because I do like that plus one counter. Or we keep this as a blocker, which is actually maybe acceptable. Right, because they do have that recruiter that I wouldn't mind trading with. And then we don't have to lose our rising star. No attack. I mean, I guess that's fine too at the end of the day. So that will be our fifth mana. We will attack with our flyers. It's good damage. Right? Boros aggro. <laughs> Whatever, dude. Cool deck. What does it do? I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Having a little fun here. Declining this, is, you know, we got to hold up that counter magic. We also have the ability to untap a blocker, and it's good that they know about that. Maybe I'll highlight it one more time. Okay. They shouldn't be able to play anything. Unless they super convoke a knight, but even then, right? Drawing for two. That's fine. We have lethal next turn, right? So unless they can deal 12 damage here, I don't see it. We keep our counter up the entirety of the, the remainder of the game here. Oh, really going for it, huh? I'll just take three. The blocks, I think, are irrelevant at this point. Should be an easy win. I'm not going to untap the fairy because that takes down our counterspell. 
they uh, solve their case, which is fine. We're gonna push up our flyers. Go all in for what I assume to be lethal. We could also mutation, not as a counter spell, but just as a pump spell as well. Uh, you do hold the right to do this within your matches, um, which is kind of cool. You know, a little bit of extra damage is nice as well. Nice win. Going first, sure. Turn one's good enough, right? And uh, we'll be able to play from there. Is a uh, mono green or gruel? What do you think? And let's just take it, right? Easy peasy. Then it opens up our attack lane. We have a nice turn three. It doesn't push up our adaptives, though. They replay their pack leader. They do have mana up here, though, so. I'm not going to bite. They definitely have protection, right? Oh, that's nice. That's really good. What? How? It's wild, right? That's kind of crazy. This is nice, though. Very good. We're double blocking. And I'm attacking. This is good for us. This is really good for us. Oh, push up the crew. No way. I'm going to be greedy. Take the extra two. Push up the team, of course. Take action. One, two. Thank you. Oh, B E A. Beautiful. We have nothing to cloak. It'd be cool if it still cloaked something. No attack. That is a 7-7. Seven, seven. Woof. It can be taken down a notch if they do remove the number of modified creatures we have. With a Vorinclex. Wow. Oh, that's a big boy. That could probably still just beat us, right? That is a bomb. Wow. Okay. We can still sink our mana into it all the time, right? And that's actually what's really cool here is we get 5-6. So every turn, even if we draw a land, that's an absolute fatty. They have double reach, though. Double reach, though. No, that's not good. That's, in fact, very bad. For our engines. Anyways, everything else can probably deal with it. Like this 8-8, don't care, right? Go get them. Uh, but the rest of the team, you know, it's a little bit higher value to us. And I love to see Mono Green doing so well. Um, this is absolutely fantastic. They've solved it. They're free casting off the top. I'm going to cloak this because then we get more from it. Mm -hmm. X equals six. Every single time. And I think we could probably start sending the eights through, right? Force double blocks. I like that idea. Not too shabby whatsoever. Literally an 8-8 creature engine. As long as we maintain and dodge fights. Wow, look at those lands off the top. I'm going to give them a nice because that was hot. Wow. Wow. They are hitting it. Whoa. Okay. That's not bad. But it's all our mana. Okay. We can still kind of sink into it, right? And take the two fairies. Oh my god, that's actually really good. Um, take action, one on each. I 
and then plus one counters on them all. Do we go all in here? We could definitely force bad blocks, but I don't want to give them our engine. This is 18 damage. Which is going to pull the 4-5, the 2-2. Two, two. Right, takes two of them. Then they double block here. Three, six, nine here, additionally. I think we go all in. So they're blocking the two nines, right? And then that still leaves nine, 16, 21 damage. I think we go all in, don't we? And then we just clean up next turn. I think we clean up next turn. Double block on this. Can you afford that? I'm going to kill Vorinclex. I think we can just finish him off this next turn. Right? We still have an army of creatures. We just go wide at this point. And now they don't have as threatening of a field state as they did last turn because they are forced into some, you know, unconventional blocks. A silverback, that gains a lot of life. That's actually really good. Are they going to rebuild their board state immediately? There's no way they get that lucky. Wow. What? How have you not double landed or triple landed? They just totally rebuilt the entire board state. They only have one flyer now. We flip our flyers. This is unblockable. We should flip this too. We can't because it requires blue. Shoot. We should have flipped this because it's unblockable. My bad! Bro, am I going to overextend myself? Keep forcing. Keep forcing. They're doing so good, it's crazy. Kill the seven. It's a draw engine for them, they should keep that. I can't believe they're going to win this game. How many cards do they even have left? 29? I should have just built walls. I cannot believe they got so lucky off these top decks. They played like 10 creatures in a row, both turns. And now a Tyrannorex? Whoa! I am really impressed. I should have just chilled out longer. Wow. Well, a little late. This is unblockable, though. So that's really going to help us out here, Billy. This is tapped as... Oh, no, that's, that's ready to go.
I guess maybe we should have put it here. Attacked with them both. And it, I think I misplayed. But they still only have one blocker. So they block up to 18. And they only hit 16. But then they lose their creature. I think if I put the counter here, we would have had lethal, though. No, we had it for 17. They would have still got 18. At least this way we confirm get it. We should have put our counter on this card knowingly last turn. As well. Oh, no, because we can't buff. I think we may have just missed lethal. I'm pretty certain we did. Twenty life, we can untap. They have so much mana. I don't know how they've got third oh wow. I'm we one hundred percent punted this. We one hundred percent punted this. I could have just thought one extra second and put that other counter on the spell dancer, we would hit for lethal easily. Dang. They're gonna gain two hundred and fifty life here and dodge our next lethal hit. They have done an absolute phenomenal job here. This has been truly uh, a fantastic game for our mono green opponent. Counter unless they pay 11, we have to, right? Or let's have Boron Clex. They have 10. That's not a mana. This is only for creatures. I guess we counter it, don't we? And maybe they don't have any more creatures. I think they still just hit us for a lethal, don't they? Man, these silverbacks. Good game. We're done. It's over. They're gaining 10 life every creature. They're playing five creatures a turn for the last five turns. Crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy lock opponent. You just played their whole deck against us. Very good. Just attack for lethal. Good game. That was a great match. I had a ton of fun. We did misplay, though. We 100% had lethal. I think, if not twice, once for sure. Um, fantastic match. Thank you so much, opponent. Going first. Keeping the hand. I mean, I think it looks okay. We've heard you say that before, HGG. <laughs> no, it's fine. Uh, untapped island off the top. No, we do have to pay life, but it doesn't look like we're facing an aggro deck yet. I'm sure that will change. Virus beetle. A boodle? I guess we'll throw one. Forest in. Temple out. Attack for two unblockable damage. I don't want any more beetles. Third land, not playing. Interesting. Counters out. Land out. Swing for five? Okay. Now 
I think we hold up. Or should I take this? Trying to be cautious. I don't want to overextend, and I do kind of like threatening counter spells, even if we don't have them. That open mana, you know, is just going to crush their um, their thought process, right? Nope, they don't care. <laughs> they don't care at all, ladies and gentlemen. I will get rid of the summoning sickness on my temple by proliferating the, the lore counter. Um, just grab an island and proliferate all three. They're tapped out now, so we do have the, the go-ahead for this to be safe. They're just going to make, uh, you know, a token, right? No worries. Okay. We have six mana. Play the land. Go all in. Because that's going to force a block, right? Yep. I swear to God, if they have a field wipe, I am playing into it aggressively. I might actually really regret this. And by say might, what I mean to say is already do. <laughs> uh, let's just take lands. Well, this might be good. We can push uh, it up by one. I don't think the spell pierce is going to work. And, well, they're off to the hills anyways. So I guess they don't have the field wipe that we were scared of. Going first. Okay, three lands. Cool. We'll play on two. Play on three. Nothing wrong with this. We're going to play an island first. It's a little bit more threatening, I think, than a forest. And uh, temple first, just so we can get those lore counters going. Have it flip. Are you there? Okay, okay, okay. What's the two drop? Bramble Delphia. They are ramping, Larry. Oil counter. One, one, mana dork, hit for two. Three, four, five, available mana next turn. It's a dinosaur deck. Oh, Hulking Raptors are very good. Oh, but I can't pay the ward. You can pay the ward, HGG, you can pay the ward. Or two only. You got to take it. I wish it was only ward one. Because <laughs> then we could oil count it and take them both. Right, we pay three and then just have two left over. But we do take it, though. Because that mana production is pretty off the chain. Um, Only two mana. We're not doing anything. So I guess we'll hit for five. No need to remove those. Let's keep them for later. Hammer skull is nice. Only dino. Well, so it would tap itself. And then this is where things get interesting. So five goes down to, well, six goes down to three here, uh, which we do push it all in, I think. Take action, one, two, three. And this is an unblockable card, which is pretty cool, right? Just like the Spell Dancer. We don't care about the Hammer Skull. And, uh, you know, it's a six, five. Decline. So it's, uh, it basically needs to be dealt with immediately, right? We do have lethal. Uh, through the flyer and the two unblockable cards. So let's see what they can do to try to stop us here. 
five in hand, four mana plus the Bramble. And I think they have the ability to... Nope, that is their uh, total mana for the turn. Carnosaur, goodbye, Rising Star. That takes them to two available mana on the turn. Dead because of the uh, damage that they've inflicted with the forest. Ouch! We've now drawn our attention to that. Uh, you know, there's nine damage here, so... Great game opponent. Uh, maybe they've got something here. We're going to have to wait and see. Hit for nine. Where do we get to? Lethal. So the Rising Star with this Cryptic Coat, pretty wild, right? Like that damage output was hefty. They can't even block it. Going first. Okay, okay. The land is here. We will need a third. But, you know, my favorite turn one, turn two is in hand right now. And, um, you know, so cool. And then, like, so, like, we've got our favorite starting uh, lineup, and we've got our favorite closing lineup as well with the coat and the, the jungle. Uh, jungle. Jugen. Jugen? Ugen. Don't even try. Just say defense the temple, HGG. Much easier for us all. Mono red, get out of here. Well, maybe it's Boros, HGG. Maybe it's Gruul. It's not like you would know. They just cast another spell for zero. Oh my god. <laughs> All right, we get to pass over. We will counter whatever they play here. Oh, it's the Gruul deck. Picnic Runer? One Picnic Runer, boss! Yeah, right. Pay zero. Confirm zero. As good as removal. Countering unless they pay three. Isn't that cool? Ah, oh, you don't even have to pay X anything. X equals zero, baby. Let's go. Not too shabby. We do pay one life for that. Not awesome. But that's their, you know, star of the show. And I think... Instead of templing, which I normally like, we have the fourth line. Let's just clog up the field, right? Let's just put out some blockers. We know they like those. Block everything, right? I certainly think so. No attack. Wow. You know you're an aggro deck, right? You don't have to be such a bully. This will get pushed up by this, which I like. So let's slow roll this. Should we attack or just defend? We do have to attack at some point. Okay, I'll bite. Actually, I won't. I will defend. Down to 15. Making a 1-1. One, one. We push up the fairy because it can uh, attack as well as defend thanks to that ability. This is pretty good. So audacity down, anger down. Do they have a third land? Question mark. We would see that right away if they did. I don't think they do. The Anger does not put out First Strike. It does not put out any toughness. So we can still double block this. No problem. Oh, they get the land. No. Okay. They should have saved that. Because it could have been a... You know, something far worse. Technically, this would be better to keep because it helps with the dragon. Okay. Let's take it. We get hit for three. They draw. Oh, as do we. As do we. 
So let's remove this immediately. Right? Just so it can't power up with any of their spells that they like to buff up with. One damage, two eleven. No problem. Hey, thanks for the follow. Appreciate you. Hope you're having a great day. It just goes to our person, right? To themselves? Hey, maybe that's a better option. <laughs> uh, I don't think so. All right, resolve. Let's go to combat. Hit for four. And then we're going to tap our dork plus our three mana to hide these two forests as two two blockers. So we hope the creature has summoning sickness. It could be, you know, a haster, as we like to call them. A speedy Gonzalez, which is not, but these are still great cards. That double strike is pretty brutal. I'm just going to proliferate these. Oh. We're going to have three mana. This is the card we want. We're not able to play it here. But it's definitely the card we want. And now we can untap. And all in. This is 5, 10, 12. So not all in. Maybe I'm overextending, but we can unblock a 5-5. Five, five, or not unblock, untap a 5-5. Five, five. And I, you know, I think that's going to be good enough. I'm going to highlight my hand like we have something. And that way, we get the druid, which is great. Down to 5. And we can untap, again, our sleep-cursed fairy. I feel like I'm like a sleep-cursed streamer almost. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Druid drawing. Oh! <gasps> Double rage, they only have one red source. Do they have a mountain to play from their hand? If they play a mountain here, I, I might actually be dead. Just the one is fine. 14 damage. Good game. Not enough, bro! Not enough! We block five of that, which would leave us at one. Right? I like to live on the edge. Uh, well, you can't do math. It's two. <laughs> you guys know this. You know this. They play a force and then play with fire. Hashtag get wrecked. Still a great match, though. All right. Simic Cloak. Actually working. I've been playing uh, a little bit recently with this Repulsive Mutation. I think it's a phenomenal card. At first, I thought the Otter was the key card to utilize it with because the Prowess trigger. Um, but the Fairy is honestly giving it a run for its money and may be better. Um, that Flying, that War 2, the ability to untap it, uh, so now you can both attack and defend, is really good because it's, you know, 3-3 that we're pushing up. Uh, once it's a 5-5, five, five, you know, that is a quick clock. 5-5 five, five flyer um, that can also now untap to defend. Very good in the current meta because it's, you know, it's it's one mana creature. You know, it's, oh no, you sunfold it or removed it, whatever it happens to be. It's not like they hit 
you know, our five mana or our four mana creature that we've worked so much harder to get on. We've spent so much more uh, to get it in play and stuff like this, right? So um, a pretty good deck that can apply a ton of pressure, right? It's got the removal, it's got the counter magic, and, um, you know, I think it can out-tempo most of the other decks, which is pretty cool. So I hope you enjoyed. We have some sideboard cards. Hope, maybe. I think the fight is better, right? Uh, the Roots... We said we don't need this at all, right? Thrumming Bird, I kind of like proliferating. I don't think that's a bad idea and actually how the deck started uh, as an idea. Uh, Loaded Contaminator on that same note. The Simulate Crumb, again, uh, looking for the plus one counters and then uh, the Doppelgang, which we probably shouldn't talk about. <laughs> looking at you, but um, you know, a fun deck nonetheless that I had uh, a lot of luck with in Mythic Rank and had a ton of fun while playing it. So decklist is in the description below. Thank you all so much for watching to the end. I truly appreciate it. Let me know in the comments if you made it to the end. And uh, I'll see you soon in the next. Have an absolute magical day. Join me in the Discord if there's anything else you'd like to discuss. It's been my pleasure. Take care.